Alrighty, so today we have one of the most important videos that I've ever made and one of the most valuable docs that I've ever made to give away here on the YouTube channel. So, as you know here, that's saying a lot because we give a ton of value here, but we're going over a super important topic. We are talking about how to recover 300% more of your lost e-com abandoned cart sales with this eight-figure proven email marketing flow. Super important, abandoned cart, abandoned checkout flows. So, have a ton of good stuff in this video, a ton of little bonuses that you'll get throughout, so make sure you stick to the end. Um, so we're just gonna get straight into it because it doesn't matter if you already have card abandoned, checkout abandoned systems in place. This doc will unlock even more lost revenue that you didn't think invis didn't think existed. Um, and I can back that up with if this doc doesn't make you two times more in abandonment revenue, or you think it was a waste of 10 minutes if you were reading it, but waste of 40 minutes or an hour, however long this video is going to be, email me maxwellcopy.net and I will pay for your next DoorDash. Just give me your Venmo, whatever it is, whatever you're ordering, um, and I will pay for it. So this is a very valuable document. It's pretty much the basis of what I'm trying to say. So why this is important. So 70% and rising of e-commerce carts are abandoned in 2024. Like literally 70% of your carts are being abandoned. Like that seems like a shocking number, but this has been validated multiple, multiple times. Um, and it's just a very high number and that's not where we want it to be and it's rising. So, and in most cases, these customers just won't come back. So by not, we're gonna go over like why these customers won't come back, but by not having this system in place, you are actively burning cash. You literally already had in your hands. These people had it in your cart. So by not using the system every day that you don't have it live, you're burning cash. Um, so. Every single day that's being left, they're slipping by. So by going through this document, automating your recovery effectively, you will gain more sales and then prevent your competitors from stealing your sales because that's a lot of the times what's going to happen when somebody abandons their car. So very important what we're going over. There's me. If you want some background on me, there you go. Um, this doc is going to be available in the description if you want it, if you want the full version. So what's inside this is what we're going to be talking about. 2024 e-com trends, kind of where we're at with e-commerce. Then we're gonna go over the main cart abandoned problem um, and just why there are so many abandoned carts and why why that's a thing. Three, we're gonna go over the problem with many cart and checkout abandoned flows, like, oh, I already have one or I already know what I'm doing. Like, no, um, there are a lot of issues that you need to address and that this doc will address. Four, we're gonna go over the optimal 2024 cart and checkout abandoned flow. Um, eight figure proven. And then we're going to go over the eight abandoned cart email outlines with examples and templates. So we're going over the exact flow, all eight emails, what's in each email with examples, templates, subject lines, everything. Um, and six, how to properly install your cart in checkout abandoned flows in Klaviyo. Seven, we're going to talk about how to effectively optimize your flows over time, because this is going to be what really drives all the revenue um, for you in the long run. So, um, 2024 e-com trends. So again, I just want to say real quick that this is a condensed version of the document of this full document. A lot of the extra stuff is going to be, if you want it, it's in the description. It's just a link. Um, and yeah, it's also so you can join my email list, which we give out a ton of free value there. So you'll get the doc right away. So first, we're going to talk about the 2024 e-commerce trends. If you've seen a lot of my videos, you know, a lot of this stuff is what I talk about. But essentially, where we're at in 2024 is more stores, more competition. So there are new stores popping up every day thanks to Shopify, ease of sourcing products, and the overall low barrier to entry into e-commerce. You can just source a product from China, put together some AI landing pages, and boom, you have a store uh, tomorrow. Um, and a lot of these new brands that are coming on the scene, there's just exponentially new brands. A lot of them are cool, fun, hip, different angles, and all this stuff. So what this means is that you're just, you're not special. You are special in my heart, but in the grand scheme of things, how many brands are in your niche? There used to be maybe a hundred, now there's probably thousands in your niche. So the consumer has just more options to choose from. And so it's just a saturated market and it's very easy for you to get lost in the mix. Um, so when it's a lot more competitive, the market share isn't really increasing. Um, so everybody's fighting over the same people. Um, so it's becoming increasingly difficult to make sales in this competitive market like e-com. So another thing to add on to this problem is the consumer is shopping around more and they're buying less. So one of the reasons. So everybody at this point has been scammed online before and that's scarred the customer. Um, unlike times in the past, customers today like to do their due diligence. So this isn't just like you've been scammed and you never received your product. It's like you ordered from a store and then it took like seven days longer to ship than, than you thought. And those are things that will scar the customer. And so they want to do their due diligence and be like, okay, when am I getting my product? Like, is it going to come like intact? What are people saying about it? How long does it last? Things like that. Um, the customer just likes to do their due diligence because they also have the liberty to. 
because um, they can shop around with all these new brands. And then the customer today, 2024, also just has less money to spend. We're no longer in the 2020 to 2021 era of stimulus checks and just mass spending. Nobody had anything else to do but to spend, and they had stimulus checks. We don't have those. Uh, we don't have that anymore. So with all these new stores popping up, the customer will shop around before spending their precious money. They're going to see what's the best option that I can spend my money on um, for your product. And you know what? It's also fun scrolling Instagram, seeing what other brands are out there. People like shopping. It's like a hobby now. Uh, you can just scroll Instagram and you're getting all these different ads from different brands and you know, it's fun. So of course, it's easy for you to get lost in the mix. So this is kind of like what the customer looks like. They see your brand. Who is this brand? I've been scam buying online before. Why not go with one of the other 50 brands in this industry? That's being very conservative. Um, and like, what are people saying about this brand? These are just like the type of things that are going in their mind. So that's like the current state of e in 2024. Lots of competition and the customer is a lot more wary and they're gonna do their, their due diligence and shop around. So that relates to the cart abandoned problem a bit. So 70 to 85% of carts are abandoned in e-commerce. This is a staggeringly high rate of abandonment. So used to be lower, but over the past like five years, it's just steadily increasing. So that means 70 people out of 100 will like your product just enough to add to your cart, but not convinced enough to buy. So this is a good visualization. These people will buy now. Those people won't. So there are many explanations for this. Um, the person had an objection, so they added to their cart. They had an objection. They weren't fully bought in. Um, maybe they got distracted. They added to their cart, um, and then I don't know. The kid threw a plate across the room, uh, or they wanted to come back later. So that could be a number of things. So they just add to their cart, and then they are just like, okay, I'll buy this later. They're waiting for their check to hit, whatever it is. Um, and those people will leave your site, and more often than not they won't return, unfortunately. They'll add to your site, plan on coming back, and then not. So another interesting like statistic that plays into that is more than 30% of shoppers plan to buy the products in their cart at a later time, but end up not doing so. So a lot of these people, um, sometimes they just aren't looking to buy this instant and they add an item to their cart and they're like, oh, I'm, I'll buy that later. I'll wait for my check this Friday. Um, so like a couple reasons, so there isn't enough urgency or convincing on the site to get them to buy now. And theoretically, this doesn't seem like an issue. It's just like, okay, the customer is going to come back. But the issue is that many people have absolutely terrible memories. Um, I know I have a terrible memory as well. Uh, we have TikTok frying our brains and our attention spans, where it's all over the place. Um, so they completely forget they added an item to their cart. Um, and by the time they remember weeks down the line, they already changed their mind about buying. Um, or they made another purchase and they have less money. So you lose a sale um, by waiting for these people to come back. So it's kind of like I'll plan to get this later, two weeks later. It's like, what was I going to do? What was that thing that I was going to do? That happens all the time and these people just won't end up buying. Another interesting thing is 59% of US customers abandon their carts just because they were browsing. So this is an interesting thing that I haven't seen brought up before and I think this is a really good analogy that I thought of. But essentially like the e-commerce add to cart is like the Instagram likes. So it's almost like today in 2024, people just like shopping as a hobby and kind of like their like button is they'll just add an item to their cart. So they'll go shopping a little bit online, they'll go on Instagram, whatever it may be, they'll start looking up like, I don't know, fashion or supplements, whatever it may be. They go to all these different sites and then they just like mark the items that are like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe, I will, maybe I'll wanna buy that. They'll just add it to their cart so that when they come back later, it's saved for them. So it's just this new use case that we're starting to see like really in 2024 and it's as, it's just like somebody would like a funny cat video on Instagram. Um, they'll add a few items to their cart, continue browsing, plan to come back later to make a decision. But kind of like I just mentioned, people have terrible memories and they won't come back to this. So there is a bright side to this. More people today are clicking on their cart and um, adding items to it. So that's part of why the abandonment rate is so high. People just use it as like a mark, come back later. Um, so this gives us a more opportunity as marketers to send targeted marketing at them. And if you don't, then you're just burning cash. Um, and then an interesting statistic as well is 26% of shop, people aren't just like leaving and forgetting. 26% of shoppers end up buying the abandoned item from a competitor later. So like we talk about, customer likes to shop around, thousands of brand in your niche, um, getting somebody to add to cart, it's no longer as much of a done deal. That's only half the battle is adding to cart. You have to continue to work your leads until they purchase. These people are very careful with their money, so we need to continue to work them, or else they'll go with the competitor. So step one, people will like add to their cart, then they'll check out the competitors, and then they'll add carts, add to their cart, maybe one for each of the competitor market, and then they'll be like, okay, which one do I wanna go with? And so at that point, it's up to the brands to kinda of like, who is the best content and selling strategy to get these people to purchase? So that's an interesting statistic as well, and here's a bunch of sources for the data. 
So, of course, that means we need to have automated systems in place to get people to buy because not everybody will just buy right off the site. They'll add to their cart, and then we need to have reminders in place to tell these people, hey, you left something in your cart. Um, and so now most brands hopefully have their cart and checkout abandoned uh, flows installed, but now we need to talk about the problem because a lot of them are underperforming and actually an issue. So one of the main issues is you actually don't have a cart abandoned flow. This is a huge issue. And it's a limitation like with Klaviyo and which is the email sending platform and like MailChimp, all these platforms. But go look right now, 90% roughly of the brands I audit do not actually have a cart abandoned flow. I would bet money that a lot of you with your stores actually have a cart abandoned flow that's labeled cart abandoned flow, but the trigger is actually checkout started. So that means actually a checkout abandoned flow. The person went to checkout. So Klaviyo's abandoned cart flow is actually incorrect. They label it as, label it as abandoned cart, but they use abandoned checkout. Um, so you need to actually manually add an added to cart snippet to your site. So this is like an example, like using a website like Magic Spoon. I added an item to my cart. So I was just on the main landing page, added to cart, cool. I marked this item to come back later. I added to my cart. I didn't get. I didn't click this checkout button. I didn't, I didn't do it, I wasn't ready, I was just marking the item. So user adds to cart then leaves. And this is not tracked by Klaviyo. This action is not being tracked. You must install this yourself in order for it to be tracked. And so what you think is your abandoned cart is actually abandoned checkout, which is one step later where this person adds to cart and then goes to checkout also. Klaviyo calls abandoned cart. So by only having this, you're leaving a snarks ton of people um, who added to cart because more people are going to add to cart than leave than checkout because this person would need to add to cart and then click this checkout button and now they're getting filed fired what happens to the people who just add to checkout so go look right now like asap whatever account you have go look is your abandoned cart flow what's the trigger what does the trigger say does the trigger say checkout started or does the trigger say uh added to cart if it says added to cart you're good if it says checkout started you only have a checkout abandoned flow and you need to have a cart abandoned flow. And later in this talk, I'll show you how to install a proper uh, cart abandoned flow trigger. So that's the first major issue. Second major issue is the flow is just way too short. So um, with only a few emails, you're letting your customer just off the hook too soon. People have decision cycles. I'll add to my cart like today, and sometimes I need to think about my purchase for a couple days. And so if you only have like one or two days of emails in place, what happens on day five if that's when I was trying to make a decision? So um, if you're not sending anything, you're letting them off the hook too soon, they may just go with a competitor. Um, so you really wanna extend your flow to six plus emails across one to two weeks time to really fit into that conversion cycle. So reason this will improve conversions, multiple reminders, makes sure that your customer just doesn't forget, it ensures that, keeps you top of mind, um, allows you proper enough content to overcome objections that they may have, it allows you to stand out from your competitors if you have good content, um, and then give enough time for to make a decision for like a two week decision period. So it's like a bad card abandoned flow, just a couple of emails like extended by a couple of days. This is what a good card abandoned flow, uh, long and spread out. There's a lot more emails. It's splitting based off different purchases and spreading it out over like a 10 day period. That's really what you want to shoot for. Another issue is the copy isn't effective. So we want our copy and our abandonment emails to be very quick and to the point. The simple fact that you are just like showing the person their item that they specifically added to their cart with dynamic sections of your email, that's going to carry 80% of sales, just showing that. Um, so you really don't want to get too fancy with the copy. It's just going to distract. So make sure the item is the number one feature of the email. And then we want to overcome objections. That should be our only thing we're trying to do in our copy. Give them quick info on shipping, the use of the product, customer reviews, all that good stuff. And be sure to answer frequently asked questions and make the decision process as cl crystal clear as possible. We want to remove any uncertainty that there may be about the buying process. So copy just isn't effective and can be fluff. And then another issue is the design isn't conversion optimized. So similar to copy, we want the design to be short and sweet, get straight to the point, dress the item they left behind. Um, that's all you want to do. So some main aspects that you want in your design, you want a clear headline addressing the cart or value proposition. You want a button very high up in the email so the person doesn't have to scroll to click it. They can just open the email and click. You want to properly show the item left behind with all the relevant information. And then icons or sections with like further information if it's valuable. So here's like an example. Um, you can see overcome objections, big headline, your order ships free. So it says your order, not saying like to all customers orders ship free it's your order um so addressing objections also finish checking out now and you get free shipping uh return shipping is free so you can always order multiple pairs and simply keep what you like 
amazing. Plus, all of our footwear is backed by a 365 day warranty. Perfect. Um, a very high up button. Person doesn't need to scroll to hit this. And then you want to show the specific item in cart with the relevant information. And then some more support if people have questions, um, risk reversals, free return shipping, buy now, pay later, um, all that good stuff. Talk with an expert. So that's a great email. Hits all the hits everything. It's not too fancy, just straight and to the point. That's what we want. That's what we really want our designs to be. So now let's get to the optimal 2024 cart abandoned flow. So this is the exact outline that you can use to get 300% more conversions and abandonment recoveries. Let's dive right in. So this is the flow outline. So we're going to be creating the same flow for abandoned cart and abandoned checkouts. Because as we discussed, these are different triggers. We're going to be sending the same flow because it's the same, it saves you time. Um, and, but just cloning it and having two different flows, same content, but different triggers. So one of them is going to be added to cart and the other is going to be checkout started. So these are all the emails that we're going to be giving examples on, copy outlines, subject lines, and in-depth context too. But essentially what we're doing, and I'll also go through some time delays here, um, you really want as short as possible for the added cart in between email one. Usually 30 minutes we see the most success with. Test one hour, test four hours, um, but usually we see 30 minutes, 45 minutes is the best for conversions for this first reminder. So email one, quick reminder. Email two, same sort of thing, quick reminder, but maybe add a little bit more information because they didn't convert just off the reminder. And then we want to customize the content for the customer. So we're going to split by however many products you have or collections. You don't need to do two. You don't need to do 20. Maybe just do like if you have a couple main collections where it's whatever it may be, um, split by those and give product specific overcome objections. So it's specific to the product. What's the information? Hey, you left this specific product uh, behind. This is exactly what it does. That's going to drastically improve conversions and then product specific testimonials. So give them testimonials specific to exactly what they abandoned. It's going to go a long ways. And then we're going to go into a last chance email. Hey, your order is expiring. We can't hold this for you much longer. Last chance. And then we're going to split based on have they purchased before. So Depending on how averse you are to discounts, I split here for most of my accounts that I work with uh, based on only sending in discount to people who haven't purchased or they haven't purchased in the past like 90 days or so, 60, 90 days. Um, so if they have purchased before, then we're just going to send an email offering support. Hey, is everything okay? You added an item to your cart. Is there anything we can help you with? Um, and then if not, we're going to send them a discount, give them a flash discount, make it urgency driven, and then a last chance. And then same sort of email for email eight. Everything okay? Kind of a last chance. Uh, do you need support? And then, um, and then also give a last chance for the discount. So this leads us to the exact email outlines. So every email we will go in depth here. So email one, as we talked about, is the quick reminder. So some context for this email one, many people are just going to convert off this email because maybe it's the person added to their cart and they like went and went back to Instagram to start scrolling um, and they just needed a quick reminder and this reminder is going to get them over the edge. So in this email, we really don't want to waste any space or words on anything. We just want to get straight to showing the customer exactly what they left behind and allow them to finish their order. Don't try to get too fancy here. Too many words are graphic. will distract the customer from buying. Make it just, hey, here's the item. Finish your order. So purpose, simply remind the customer what they left behind. And then content, quick remark, addressing the product, dynamic product section, and then social proof and risk reversals. So here's a good example. Look at how simple this is. This is exactly what you need. So full email example, um, quick remark about the abandonment. Take another look. We save your items, complete my order, show the specific items. Here are your items with the checkout now, and then social proof slash risk reversals. Why blue dot? We design it, ship down one to three days, and free swatches. So that can get somebody over the edge. This is super simple. This is going to get somebody, the person just added to their cart 30 minutes ago. So they're, they're already warm. They just need a quick reminder. This is going to do a lot of the work for you um, in a lot of your conversions. So we want to send this usually around 30 minutes after they abandon their item. So this is a great email to go off of. Um, and then we have winning subject line ideas. So only available in this full doc here. It's completely free. You sign up for the email. You add it to my email list. You can do it if you want. If not, then you can create your own subject line ideas. Um, those are just like some of the winners that we've used. And then free copy outline. So if you want a full outline and some direction of this is how the email should be laid out, this is what copy you should use, um, then there's also copy outline. And we have these for each email. So moving on to email two, we have a nudge with social proof. So similar type of email to email one, but we're going to add a little bit more social proof. So again, keep it really 
simple and make it similar. Um, people just need another reminder at times, just a day later. Maybe the person was waiting for a certain amount of, they were waiting for their paycheck to hit, like we talked about, or they needed some time to check out competitors. Um, this email will clean up any of the remaining people who are ready to buy, offer reminders, as well as get some people over the edge who just like weren't directly ready to buy with further social proof. So purpose, give the second reminder, but sprinkle in social proof. Content, quick remark about the product, dynamic product section, and then further social proof and risk reversals. So keeping it very simple um, and similar. So this example that I showed you er earlier is going to be very strong. So if you offer free shipping on all your products, this is further information, your order ships free. There's further risk reversals here of free return shipping, buy now, pay later, talk with a dinner expert, and then dynamic product section. Um, they just went with this email, they went super hard on your orders free, there's absolutely no risk. You get returns. You get a 365-day warranty. This is going to get skeptical people over the line, and that's perfect. Subject line ideas as well, free copy outline that you can use. So now we get to the split in the flow, where we're splitting based on the product that the person left behind. So you're going to need to do that inside of Klaviyo, add a condition or add a trigger split, and then split based on did somebody leave behind this SKU, this product, um, and then make those splits. So email three, we're giving product specific information and we're overcoming objections specific to that product. So some context for this email, why we use it. The customer didn't finish their order just with the simple reminders. So they likely just need more info. They marked the item that they liked it by adding to their cart, but the reminders weren't enough, they need some more information on the product. So we wanna send them specific information um, so they have the necessary info to buy. Give them the facts and then overcome objections in the email specific to them. So purpose, give the customer more info about the specific item they abandoned, content, product specific info, and then dynamic product section, of course. Dynamic product sections help a ton with conversions. You're showing exactly what the person left behind. So full email example here. So this brand sells different types of cereals and different types of like morning breakfasts and goods and whatnot. And so this person left behind this cereal. So it's a surreal cereal. And so there's information specifically towards the cereal because they could have left behind some other product, but grab breakfast by the bowls. Cereal, it's directly to the bowl. What are you doing for breakfast? Oats, fried spaghetti, bit weird, uh, but you do you. How about a bowl of cereal? It's high protein, low carb, zero grams of sugar per bowl, and absolutely no spaghetti. So they went a little bit more fun with the copy here, but a high up button right here. I bet the subject line mentioned you left this in your car, but this is perfect in that it goes directly into the cereal in direct to the serial information and then we also have overcoming objections with information so like what's is this healthy you can see clearly zero grams of sugar five carbs 14 grams of protein high fiber and gluten-free compared to other cereals so we're not just a pretty face in fact our faces are aren't very pretty but our nutrition nutritionals perfect now they're good looking so this is perfect <clears throat> giving information specific to the product specific to the item that they abandoned this is kind of like all the information that you want to give notice it's not a blog article it's not too long but it gives a ton of necessary information that somebody who abandoned the cereal would like to know um, so that's perfect subject lines as well free copy email four we're following up on our prior email of product specific information but now we're doing product specific testimonials so this is going to be very effective as well when we're speaking directly towards the person and the product they abandoned so context similar to the last email specific info about the abandoned item that'll go a long ways and people just need testimonials that's one of the main ways you can overcome objections and get people who are questioning your product to buy so purpose testimonials number one way to convert skeptical customers um, this can get many on the edge to buy, like what I just said. Content, remind on the customer's cart, give the dynamic product section, and then go hard on testimonials and social proof. So specifically testimonials. So take a look at this example. So testimonial specific to the item abandoned. So this person abandoned, let's see, what was it? Jacket, they abandoned a jacket. So there's an image of a jacket right up top. My new obsession, I now plan most of my outfits around this jacket amazing and then we have the dynamic section so this would be a clavio loaded section here and then further um 4.9 out of five stars so if you have like this rating something this good then keep it so because this is going to be huge 4.9 out of five stars is perfect on 68 reviews um this person's second one great jacket love this jacket amazing so further testimonies and social proof if somebody abandoned a jacket this is gonna to prove to them like it's legit and people love this product and so this will go a long ways. So you want this type of email for jackets, for pants, for shirts, 
for shoes, whatever it may be. Um, you want to split by the product and give those specific testimonials. Because um, a jacket specific testimonial is going to convert higher than a general website uh, testimonial when regarding abandonments. It's something we have tested. Subject lines and copy outline there, of course. And then email five, now we have the last chance. So after the person got all this info, still haven't bought, email five, last chance. So context, at this point, customers should have all the info they need to purchase. They've probably clicked on the site and they have the information from the testimonials and the product specific email. Now it's just we need to get them to act. So a bit of urgency to get someone over the edge is what this email is about. Go hard on urgency, give them a harsh deadline and get them to impulse finish their order. Content. Make same sort of thing, it's just we want to add urgency. So dynamic product section, add urgency, and then further shopping ability, because maybe they didn't want the specific cart they had, the specific item in their cart. So you can see urgency in the copy here, your order is expiring, dynamic product section, social proof and risk reversal icons, and then you know what, we're on like day five, we've sent five, e this is the fifth email we sent to someone, maybe they just don't want this product, but you may like these ones. So give it some further shopping options for the person, um, cause again, maybe they didn't like the original product and they changed their mind. Now we give them the option to keep shopping. So especially, you could do this earlier on in the emails, but I like to be specific um, with the item the person abandoned um, and just really try to get them to convert on that and keep the focus in the first few emails on that specific item. And then at this point, maybe they aren't bought in and we need to give them other options. So that's the thought process behind that. And of course, subject lines and copy outline. And then we have email 6A. So if you remember, this is where we're splitting based on if somebody has purchased before, if they haven't. If they have purchased before, we're not gonna send them the discount. So we're gonna send them email six being like, what happened? So now it's time to kind of wave the white flag almost in that we're surrendering. Uh, this email serves as an absolute last chance to buy for the past buyers. Um, Non-buyers, we're gonna send them a discount as I discussed. We also just wanna offer support because maybe their objection or their question wasn't addressed. So purpose, we wanna use a personal founder touch to get a last ditch effort at conversion and we want to offer support for if they have questions. So content, it's gonna be text-based email from the founder, give a last chance to order and then offer the support kind of in that order. So here's a full email example. We can see we start off with a personal touch from the founder saying, hey, it's Mike, co-founder of this brand, and I wanted to personally reach out to you, make sure everything was okay. Looks like you added an item to your cart, so we're gonna offer support next. So if you had any question about your order, you can simply reply to this email, and we'll get back to you in at least 24 hours. Amazing. And then last chance to shop, you can still claim your order with free shipping for 24 more hours. So stock moves fast, we wanna make sure everybody's a fair shop at getting the piece they want. So add some urgency, thank you for considering. So this checks all the boxes, personal touch, offer the support if they have questions, and then give a last chance to shop with urgency. This email could potentially be like one of the best performing ones just because the personal touch, it really stands out. So there's that example, um, subject lines, free copy outline. And then for the people who haven't purchased before, this is where they're going to defer and enter the discount. So now we are giving them some sort of offer, whatever you wanna do, but context, the email should only be sent to people who've never bought. Um, we're willing to give them a discount because they haven't bought and we know once we get somebody to try our product, they're much more likely to come back. So flash discount with a ton of urgency to get the impulse purchases. Um, so purpose, price incentive to get first time buyers. Um, so offer the discount with urgency and then dynamic Clavio section. Keep it really simple, really, really simple. Just focused on the discount and the um, offer and the items they left behind. So this example, flash discount just for you. Super, super just flash discount just for you, $10 off your next order over 200, use code this uh, at checkout, claim your order. So offer incentive with urgency right off top, notice how it's super simple, dynamic product section, finish my order and then support, perfect. Don't need to do anything crazy, you don't need to put crazy graphics in an email to get it to convert well. We just wanna give the offer and add some urgency and then the dynamic section will carry the load for a lot of this, so. That's kind of this first email, make them act quick, and that's what we want. So, subject line and free copy outline. Next, we have the discount last chance, which comes after the discount opener. So this is a flash sale, so context. We all know that last chance emails do well. People just need deadlines to buy. Um, some of them do, so be strict on this one. Customers will come in and they'll finish their order. So keep it simple and just focus on the offer. Don't go crazy at all. 
any of the aban these abandonment emails, keep it simple. So purpose, add extreme urgency to get that impulse and last chance buy. So content, heavy urgency on the discount, dynamic cart section, and then even more urgency. So here's an example, um, just super simple. Look at how easy this is. Last chance, 25% off your cart. We can't hold your items for much longer. Your one time 25% off code expires today. So. This is perfect, so simple, nothing else that you could do besides buy. Last chance, I'm sure the subject line and preview text had a ton of urgency as well. And then if the person wanted to shop other items, there are buttons in the footer. And yeah, winning subject lines, you can have them if you want them in the free copy outline. And then email eight, the last email for these people who were offered the discount and didn't buy, very similar to email 6A, um, just we want to give that founder's touch, get some people on the edge to buy, and then a last, last chance. So pretty much the same thing as email 6A, but includes a discount. So we're using that personal founder touch to get a last ditch effort and then offer support if the customer has questions. So content, text based from founder, dress the card abandoned, give last chance for discount and offer support. So here's a great example. Uh, hey there, um, I'm the founder of this brand. I wanted to personally reach out to you. So personal touch from the founder, it's from the founder. Um, looks like you added an item to your cart to check out, but didn't complete your order. You can claim with this discount for only 24 more hours. So then the discount code, super clear where the button is. Perfect. Thank you for considering us. And then of course, offer support. PS, if you have any questions about your order, reply to this email. We'll get back to you within 24 hours. So if you have fast customer service, that can be a major plus and should definitely include that because some people could ask you and eventually convert. So very, very effective email. That's what it ends out on. So now we've kind of gone through the whole entire flow. So we're going to go over how to install the emails in Klaviyo. So we have about eight emails here, but we have the different variations. So it actually makes it like 10, 11 emails total. So let's talk about how to actually install this inside of Klaviyo. So just a reminder that abandoned cart and abandoned checkout are different. We've talked about this, but abandoned cart and abandoned checkout are very different. Checkout started is further down the funnel, which means the customer adds to cart and then they actually go to the payment checkout. So customer could add to their cart, but if you only have the checkout started flow, then anybody who adds to the cart isn't being tracked. So the added cart trigger, this is what it looks like in Klaviyo. It has a little gear icon and it is not automatically added. And the checkout started trigger, if it's Shopify, big commerce, whatever you use, hopefully you're on Shopify, um, but this is automatically added into Klaviyo with the Klaviyo Shopify integration. They name this the abandoned cart flow, as we've talked about, super annoying, but this is how they look. So this is farther down the funnel and this isn't automatically added. So we're going to talk about how to add an added to cart trigger. So it's gonna be a little bit more technical. So hopefully you can at least understand a little bit where we're coming from, but there are two steps in adding an added to cart metric to your store um, as well as in Klaviyo. So if you did see that you don't have the added to cart metric, if you go to metrics inside of Klaviyo and you don't see this, then follow these steps. So. Essentially, it's literally just two steps. You add the snippet to your Shopify store, and then you test that it's working inside Klaviyo. So this is a blog article from Klaviyo that I've linked here on how to add it. Um, it's super easy. So I cleaned up these, snaps, these steps here if you would like to use them. Again, this doc is in the description, um, the full doc. And so I'll briefly gloss over it, but essentially if you have custom liquid blocks inside of Shopify, which in most cases you will, in most cases, you want to follow this step by step. Um, so you're just going to add a default product and then add a section with a custom liquid, which is given inside of the um, article here. So you're going to have to get the snippet from here. But um, if you, so in most cases, it's just as simple as this. You just go to your homepage, products, add a section, paste the snippet here, and then click save. It's that easy. Um, if you don't have custom liquid blocks, it's a little bit annoying because you actually have to go into the code. Um, so you have to know where to put the file. So you edit the code and then you insert it here by this guide. So under the body tag, you insert it here, exactly how it's laid out. Add an if product above it, add end if below it, and then click save. This is how it should look. And so then you're good. So that means you installed the code. Now you want to verify that it worked and it's inside of Klaviyo. So this is how you can test your added to cart snippet. So just go to your website on your homepage. Just when you look up the website, add this UTM. So UTM email, and then put in whatever email you want. So just add this to the end and then just on your store. And this is your store URL. So you're actually on your store. You enter this UTM and then add an item to your cart. It's that simple. And then, 
go to Clavio. So you add an item to your cart, go to Clavio in the search bar up at the top, just put the email that you used in the UTM. And then if you click on the profile, you should see that a profile was created, or if you have a profile, you will see that an added to cart event occurred. So just click on the profile, look at the activity, you'll see this person added to cart. And then boom, you have an added to cart metric. So then on the left bar inside of Clavio, you can go to the metrics section and you should see added to cart in there. Um, if you don't, then that means you messed up with the code, uh, which you should fix. And you can reach out to me over email if you have any questions with getting that. So. As far as like setting up the flow inside of Clavio, once you have the trigger, here's just a video of actually installing it. So the trigger, you just want the trigger to be added to cart, and these are the filters that you want. So checkout started zero times to starting this flow. So if somebody adds to cart and then goes to checkout, we don't want them to continue in the flow. We want them to receive the checkout abandoned flow. So I'm gonna exclude people who add to checkout, and then also for the people who buy. So we don't wanna make sure that people have placed orders zero times. And then has not been in this flow in the last 30 days. There's a video here on how to install it, just me physically installing it. If you want it, go download the um, this document. Uh, same here for checkout started. Same sort of thing. The trigger is checkout started, and then the filters placed order zero times to start in this flow, and then has not been in this flow in the last 30 days. So same filters, but not the checkout started one. Um, there's a video here as well. Moving right along, now we wanna talk about another technical thing, abandonment dynamic content. So this is gonna be all of your formulas for actually putting the dynamic pictures, dynamic links, all that good stuff in an abandonment email so that when somebody opens up their email, they see these are the items that, are, that were in your cart and they can see everything. So this is one of the most, this is the most important part of an abandonment email. You must have this because this is gonna be the part that converts everybody when they actually see their items. So make sure you have this. Um, these can be difficult and annoying if they're not locked in. So make sure that you have them. So, and it's very important to note that the abandoned cart and then the abandoned checkout dynamic sections, like the variables and the codes that you're using are different. So you can't just use the abandoned checkout dynamic content and put that on your abandoned cart flow because they're different triggers and they're getting different information from Shopify. So. Always preview your email with Clavia's preview feature to make sure that the content is loading in. So here are some guides just to help you out. Um, these are in general, in most cases, these are going to be the dynamic content sections that you want. So there's a video here, essentially for abandoned cart, you wanna add a split and then add dynamic images here. So I can quickly go through this. This is a split. So you have an image on the left side and then for the image um, split settings, there's nothing really you need to do here or in display options as well so you just want to make the uh, dynamic content the following you can see the image is event.image url which is right here and then the text on the right side once you go there you want the item name this should be the data and then if you want to put price price should be this as well and then the checkout link typically for your checkout link if you have if your store has an abandoned cart page or just like a cart page um, usually it's just like www.nike.com slash cart, um, link to that. If not, Clavio, Clavio's link will send you, send the person just to that item that they viewed. So ideally you have a cart page because then that, that person will physically see their cart, but if not, this will do. Um, so generally that's what the abandoned cart dynamic content is going to be. If you have issues with it, reach out to Clavio support just in their chat bot and be like, hey, I can't figure out the dynamic sections. Can you give me the dynamic sections? Um, and they'll help you out. And then abandoned checkout, similar but different. Instead of doing a split, we wanna use a table. Under table settings, we have to make it dynamic and we have to customize all this stuff. So a little bit more annoying. So. Again, this video is here. You just want to make it dynamic and all that good stuff. I won't bore you with that now, but a little bit more annoying. And there's more stuff that you can do with abandoned checkout because we're getting more information from Shopify. Um, so moving right along, we want to talk about how to optimize over time. Now that we're done with all the technical annoying stuff, how do we optimize this? So in a nutshell, we really just want to A to B test the because that's, that's really the only way to improve, the only way to know. Um, so... Why you should test, we wanna make more money. Small tests here and there will give you 25 to 50% revenue boost here and there, and percentage boost compound over time. 25% once, you keep 25% increasing, then that just ever 
it just increases. We all know Warren Buffett. Um, so this outline I, I've given you as far as like the emails and the layout, it's only a starting point. There's a lot that you're going to want to change and every brand is different and will require different optimizations. Uh, I had to make it pretty general. Um, small little iterations will make or break the success of your abandonment flows. So to display the impact of A to B testing, here are like some examples of recent A to B tests we've ran. This so was a flow email where you can see it was delivered to the same amount of profile less profiles here and this generated 2.28k this generated 649 placed order rate three times more roughly um and then click rate obviously much higher as well about two times more so that was a change in content uh, or actually it was a subject line that's how much a subject line a small minuscule changes can make such a huge difference there's like a long form for short form test uh do we want to have a long form email um, in this abandonment, or do we want to have a short form email that's super quick? We found that the short form was much better. Um, Saying here, alignment test on content resulting in 5K extra in one month, um, rather than having alignment being on the left like they had before, and like we tested, we aligned it in the middle. Much more increased revenue, increased click rate. Um, a four-way test, you can see here, nearly 2X in revenue all over all the others. So 1.5K, 1.5K, 2.6K, 1.6K. So this one was the clear and away winner. Um, so that's awesome. Once this isn't split, this will generate a lot more money. Um, product display test resulting in six times more conversions here. So one, one purchase here, six purchases here um, on a higher ticket product, higher clicks, um, even with lower opens. So. There's another one, text-based layout test resulting in 40% boost in conversions, placed order rate 1.2% on a different type of text-based style versus this one, 1.7%. Um, email content test resulting in 2x in conversions, 5.1% uh, placed order rate, 10.6% placed order rate, 8% click rate, 13.8% click rate. This was sent to a lot more people, so this was still coming in, but lots of tests that you should do. Important A to B tests that you wanna run with the abandoned cart and abandoned checkout series. Um, if you want the doc, go get it, of course. And then here's how to set up your A to B tests and flows. There's two different ways you could do it. I prefer this way, where you add a conditional split to your flow, and then you create a random sample, and then you just copy and paste the prior email here. And then, so as you'll see, this email, I just copy and paste it, and then you wanna reconnect the flow back over. So you can do an A to B test where you click on the actual email and say, create a B test. The only thing is, I think it's a lot more difficult to see the data. I like being able to see, just right when I open the flow, what do the numbers look like? Like, I don't have to click into the email to view the A B test. I can just look inside of the Clavio flow and understand everything that I need and just get a brief overview of the numbers. That's what I recommend. Um, and you're able to do a little bit more with it. So that's how I recommend doing it. Moving on, that is it for this one. So thank you for reading, watching. Uh, really hope you got some value. Put a lot of stuff in this and a lot of people would charge a lot of money for this. So if you're interested, join my two to three times per week newsletter, the inbox, inbox newsletter .com, actionable free tips, content guides that people, others will try to sell you for $497. Genuinely, like a lot of people charge a lot of money for this type of stuff. So feel free to email me if you have any questions. Those are my socials if you want. And then if you are an e-com brand doing at least $50,000 a month, you can book a call and give you a free consultation on uh, your email strategy. So again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, this, so hopefully we will see you in the next one if you enjoyed it. And let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.